Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to show you how to install a synthetic clarinet pad using our brand new Opus synthetic clarinet pads that we developed here at MusicMedic.com. A couple of other news items before we get to that. Uh, we've been getting a lot of comments on uh, questions about our Neo pads, which we came out uh, earlier in the month of Padtober. Mm -hmm. uh, keep sending those questions. Keep thinking about them. Uh, and keep making your comments on the videos that we put out. We'll keep doing that. Um, if you're really curious about the Neopads and you're really wondering how they work and you're thinking about it a lot, I would highly suggest that you order a couple. Uh, just pull off the C and E flat key of an alto saxophone if you have one in your shop. Measure the inner diameter of the pad cup, subtract a half millimeter, and order those two sizes. Get yourself a little glue and get yourself a couple of extra spuds. For basically the cost of lunch, you can test the pads out and answer all of these questions and save a lot of time for very, very little amount of money. So and, and check, boom, yeah. And boom, you'll be done. Yes, that's right. So check out uh, the Neo pads. And that's just, I wanted to, I know we're doing clarinet pads today, but for the sax pads, uh, there's just been so many questions and comments. It's yeah. a really good idea that you guys just start trying them out. Um, all right. So Leroy, we're going to talk about uh, synthetic clarinet pads today. I do have a hashtag for today, and this is important because this, the Opus clarinet pads, take that in the comments, put it in the questions, or in the comments below. Take the hashtag, put it in the comments below. That's going to give you 15% off of any of the courses that we have coming up in 2023. We also have nice. a October, we also have a, I'm reading the thing here. There is a course in July mm -hmm. that is not on this calendar. It's going to be a basics for clarinet course. We'll and that's going to be, I think, the third week of July. So by next week, I'll have that back up on the website. And so that if you do win the drawing for next week uh, and you want to use it to get 15% off the clarinet course in, over the summer, that'll be available to you. So the winner for this week, now I'm going to go back to Neopads. Uh, <laughs> going back and forth, man. The, the, the winner for this week is going to get 10% off the Neopad set, uh, Alto Tenor Berry. And the winner is Adam C. All right. At Send me an email to rich at musicmedic.com. I will get you your discount on the Neopad set. And now remember, for those of you who are watching right now, take Opus Clarinet Pads, put it in the comments below. And if you win next week, you'll get 15% off any of the courses that are coming up in 2023. Uh, Leroy, we've got synthetic clarinet pads on the brain here. These, of course, are something that has been adopted mm -hmm. in the repair industry for several decades now. Yeah. Uh, Pete Valentino was one of the original uh, innovators who came out yep. with this uh, supply, and it's been well adopted by different suppliers. It's evolved over time, of course. Um, you have a tremendous amount of experience not only installing uh, synthetic pads, traditional pads, but also kind of thinking about their function yep. and form, and you are also integral to developing the synthetic clarinet pad, uh, the Opus, this one right here, uh, the Opus synthetic clarinet pad here at Music Medic. Um, so I wanted to ask you uh, a couple of things about that. I also want to give a shout out to all of the technicians who beta tested the Opus pads. Sometimes when we're coming out with a product, we decide to uh, send some out there for yeah. people to test. And so thank you so much to all yes. of the technicians who gave us your feedback. Uh, it, Very helpful. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it helped us get the final shape of the pad, the final durometer, and also helped us with sizing. Yeah. That, uh, these were all decisions that we really helped uh, needed help with from the community. So thank Absolutely. you for that. Um, Leroy, before we talk about how to install one of these synthetic clarinet pads, let's talk about the benefits of using a synthetic clarinet pad. What are the benefits? Okay, the, the main biggest benefit, obviously, is going to be more um, resistance to moisture. So whether, whether it be in the horn and you're playing it, or if you're outside and doing something like with marching band or something like that, and I don't want to say, I hate to say it rains, mm -hmm. or if it's like moist outside or something like that, it they resist moisture and it doesn't absorb it. So, and if anybody has done any sort of work with traditional pads, um, there is a layman's term on there called a pad belly, where it looks like, you know, maybe I had a couple too many beers last night or something like that. And you have a little bit of, where it just kind of like almost goes inside of the tone hole instead of staying on top of it. That's a pad belly. Okay. Um, the synthetic pads will never, will never do that because they will never absorb moisture. Okay, let's also talk about the kind of natural elements of the felt that sure. can cause problems. Um, well, there's a, the one major one is, oh, I don't know, like, 
I don't know. Are you hungry for lunch? <laughs> I'm thinking Swiss cheese today. <laughs> anyway, you know, um, what you're looking at is not anything made up or nothing that actually someone did. It was actually a bug that did this. Uh, in our industry, the layman's term is a pad bug. Mm. Uh, it will go in there and actually eat the felt that's in the pads. And they are very, very determined because, um, as you guys well know, the regular felt um, sorry, regular felt pad is covered by a bladder skin. So they actually burrow through the bladder skin to eat at the felt. So these guys are really, really determined little dudes. And mm. not only do they do that, but not one just does that. It's, it's a family, it's a colony. So and they go in your case, start up camp, mm. have, a, have a family or three. Okay. And, you know, the problem is then you have eggs and larvae and all kinds of stuff in your case. So if you bring an instrument like this and say it's been sitting in like a relative's attic or something like that for a long time and you want to have like your son or your daughter or grand grandkid go into band and that happens, you're going to have to have the instrument repadded, overhauled, and then probably either the case repaired or replaced. So like either fumigating the case or just replace it just because if you put traditional pads in there again, and if the bugs are still in there, they will go straight after it again. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good tip. Uh, that's good to know about synthetic pads. Let's also talk about the other differences between the traditional mm. and synthetic pads, uh, the shape. Yeah. So um, in my hands here is, on my left hand here, I've got a traditional pad. And then on my right hand, I have the synthetic pad. Um, if you look really closely here, this traditional pad has a little bit of a bevel on it. And my finger's covering that up. I'm sorry, guys. So it has a little bit of a bevel on it. That bevel actually goes, is the part that actually goes inside of the pad cup. Um, the bigger part, the outside bevel, sits on the actual rim of the pad cup itself, and that's actually your pad protrusion. This pad, however, the synthetic pad, is completely cylindrical. It's, it's a straight cut. Almost, almost all, I'm going to say not all, but a good chunk, a majority of the synthetic pads that are on the market are cylindrically cut like this. There's only a couple that I know of that have a bevel um, straight from the, man, the, from the vendor. Okay. Um, but ours are cylind um, cylindrical. They're very easy to use. Um, the biggest difference is basically measuring the pad cup and knowing what size to get. Can you tell about the black one too? So these are available. Oh, yeah. I never said this, but these are also available in black. So and there we go. If you needed, if you needed something like that in black, that is an option on the website. Absolutely. Let's talk about how to measure the, for the synthetic pad. How do you measure for a synthetic pad, Leroy? It's very. It's actually very, very easy and very simple. So I have a I have a small pad cup here on the bridge key, and I have a digital caliper. So. Just like we've done with like saxophone pad cups or any other pad cup, you basically want to make sure that bad boy's on, make sure that it's zeroed out, take that pad cup and measure the inside. And then I like to kind of just turn it and check every which way around that pad cup to make sure that I'm getting a good measurement. And it also tells me if it's round. If, if you can't visually see it, it'll give you a better idea if the, if the pad cup is actually round as well. Okay. Now let's also talk about the quarter sizing. I know that's something that this audience may not be totally familiar with. I know professional technicians who are used to synthetic pads yeah. are used to that. What is quarter sizing and how do you use it when you're measuring the inner diameter of a pad cup to then order what you need? Good question. Um, unlike a traditional pad, um, synthetic material is there's no, there's like no variances, there's no nothing. There's no weird craziness as far as like having to worry about something being off or different. Okay, so, so it's very consistent in terms of size. Absolutely. If we cut it at 9.0, it's going to measure 9.0. It'll stay there, right. In millimeters. Okay. So the great, that's, that's one of the great things about this, and that's actually one of the many reasons we can actually offer quarter sizes is because it's, it's easy to do. Um, it, also, it also makes installing the pad, I'll say, uh, I don't want to say easier, but more, more connected. And when I say that, so like, say for instance, if I was measuring this pad cup, this one actually measured at exactly uh, 9.25, a little bit more than 9.25. Okay. So if we're talking quarter sizes, I would pick the 9.25 pad, put it in there, and it's going to have a nice snug fit. Now, if we didn't do quarter sizes and we only had half sizes, the only pad that would actually fit would be a nine. 
it would fit in there and it would be good, but there'd probably be like a little bit of a line on the, between the edge of the pad cup and the pad. Okay. And the issue with that is, especially if it's that big of a gap, I know we're only talking like, like 0.2 of a millimeter, but in this kind of stuff, it's, it's big. Okay. Um, the glue can kind of spooge out and, mm -hmm. and then it gets messy and then it, it just, it's not really easy to work with. The quarter sizing makes eliminates a good chunk of that variable as far as like having a space between the pad cup and the pad itself. Okay, so when we're ordering, we want to kind of order true to size. If you get a 9.2 on your caliper for the ID of the pad cup, order a 9.25. Uh, yeah, because calipers are going to be have different varying accuracies when you're when you're measuring. Okay. To the tenth, you're probably pretty good. Okay, so um, and if it's a 9.0, order a 9.0 as yep. opposed to something higher or lower. Yep, and for a good example too, like say if you're measuring it's like a 9.1, that might mm. be that might be the I don't know which one to go. Well, if you're going to order a 9.25, obviously that's bigger than a 9.1, so that won't work. The next best thing to do is a nine. You'll there might be a tiny bit of a, a little gap, but again, it's not going to be anything remotely as big as what we were talking about before. Okay, cool. Let's go over how to install them and let's go over the tools that we need to do the job. Okay, so the tools, again, it looks like a lot, but it's not too much stuff. So obviously the instrument and the key, obviously the pads, um, the glue, and I prefer the pellets when I'm doing clarinet and small, um, small woodwind work, a uh, screwdriver to take off and remove the key, the tweezers to pick up the glue pellets if you have big hairy hands like mine, it's a lot easier. Um, a key clamp if you want it. Uh, some bench blocks if you want to hold the key on there as well. Um, a pad prick or poker to remove and to possibly hold the new pad. Um, a feeler gauge to check and make sure that it's sealing and a junky screwdriver or some other cleaning utensil to basically scrape out all the old glue in there. Some awesome pad slicks and a heat source. Okay. So those are the tools, and then can you show us how to... I see that you already have the pad cup cleaned out there. Yes. Could you show us how to install the pad? I can, but will I? Oh, I'm just kidding. No, no. Yeah, of course. Do. Yeah. Absolutely. So like Rich said, I already cleaned out the pad cup. I don't need too much glue. It is a smaller pad cup, so I will just put a couple... I will just put a couple glue pellets in there. There's no need to do more than that. Okay. Um, and again, this is, uh, this is a 9.2 millimeter uh, pad cup nine same kind of thing usually about two pellets is going to be good um, i do have a good trick for you guys um, when you're doing even on the bigger pad cups when you're using the pellets i always recommend heating up the back of the pad cup first so what this does is that it'll actually melt the glue from the back and it'll start to adhere to the pad cup itself because if you don't what will end up happening is the glue will the fan from the air torch will actually blow the blue the glue pellets out and then you have to either get new ones or find them and it's just it's so much easier just to go the other way okay so we're heating up the cup now you've got the air moving on top of the adhesive yep. so i'm just basically going to just take this taking pad with the paper side down into the glue and turn it about 45 degrees that'll that'll um, evenly distribute the glue between the pad and the pad cup. Very good. So then at this point, I'll just take that key, screwdriver, and then put the key back on the instrument. And while you're doing that, Leroy, um, I'm going to ask you, let me see what questions I have. As far as these go, um, do you feel that these are faster to install than a traditional pad? I 100% believe that um, for a couple of reasons. One, um, and I'll go over this in just a second, it, it takes a seat a lot faster than okay. a traditional pad. Um, I also feel that sometimes just getting them level, and I don't know if it's because um, there's no ridge that actually sits on the pad, uh, pad cup rim or not, but I always feel that adjusting the pad and kind of getting it where I want seems to move, seems to move a little bit smoother and easier than a traditional pad as well. Okay. So you, now you've got the key back on the instrument yep. and how do we go about checking for level? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get some of the stuff out of my way mm. and then, and then grab my feeler gauge and then I will check, I'll check and see where it's grabbing and it might be a little hard to see but it is definitely grabbing in the back 
and a little bit less. It is grabbing in the front, but not as much as I'd like. So what I'm basically going to do is just grab my heat source, heat up that pad cup a little bit. Not too much though, because if you, the great thing about the air torch is it doesn't get insanely hot and you can actually dial in the temperature you want to. So the overheating, so trying to overheat stuff kind of gets taken away, kind of gets taken out of the element of, of variables, which is great. And what are you doing with your pad slick there? I notice you, are you pushing or pulling the pad a certain direction? Uh, depending on where, depending on where it's heavy, I will push or pull. So this one was actually heavy in the back. Can you turn that uh, the other way yeah. so they can see kind of the angle of your pad slick? Yeah. So, so this, so I'm using the smallest pad slick in our artisan pad slick selection here. So it was actually catching in the back of the pad cup way more than in the front. Okay. So, so were you going to take it like this? Yep. So what I did was I basically put the pad slick underneath here and then I'll say I pull, I, I basically put a little bit of pressure on the pad and then I basically pulled it forward. Can you turn your hands kind of 45 so they, so the camera can see how you would do that? Sure. So I'll actually just kind of stand off to the side here so I can actually do this. So, so if we're going to, so if we're doing this, I'll basically just hold the pad slick there, push down on the pad slick, and then I'll push up, and then I will basically just kind of pull it out. I know okay. it's a little bit of a motion there, but if you look at the pad slick, I'm having it, I'm basically just going to pull it out like that. And what that'll do is it'll, it's enough movement where it'll start to move the glue inside of the pad cup and basically reposition it to where it's needed. Okay, so once you reposition it with the pad, uh, thanks for entertaining that. By yeah, the way. no worries. Uh, after that's repositioned, what's our next step? Um, to basically check it again to see to see how we're doing, and that one actually came. See how fast that was? We're booming right now. It's kind of it, it's basically right where it needs to be. Okay, so you've got the pad level. How do we get a seat? Do you need a seat? Are these synthetic pads? And it's a lot of questions. But is it? Yeah. Is it also? easier to get a seat with a synthetic pad and how do you not overseat them? It is absolutely easier to get a seat on a synthetic pad. Um, I don't care how firm or not firm the, the, the pad is. Okay. It will always take a seat quicker than a traditional pad. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, if you guys were watching as I was doing this, I was basically just holding this key down. Um, I took a look and I'm going to take this off and show you guys here in a second, but it actually has a seat already. Okay. So, um, but if, if you want if you want a different way or if you're like kind of multitasking and you're like saying you're doing this pad and you're trying to do this pad at the same time to try to save yourself some time um, you can get a, um, a key clamp like this I've, I've actually modified this one a little bit and uh, lightened it up so it doesn't overseat anything um, and then basically put the clamp on the key the the trick I would like to tell you guys especially on the upper joint or on smaller pads like this one if you have the opportunity to do so, instead of putting it on the actual pad cup itself, uh, I would put it on the actual ring. Because what that'll actually do is the, the chimney that's there, it'll actually stop the, the, the clamp from going, I'll say, and just going and going and going. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to just, if you wanted to clamp this for like, you know, five, 10 seconds, you could just put that on there, just like this, put it on there for a few seconds, and then take it off, and then you'd be good to go. Okay, and can these be used on other instruments besides uh, besides clarinet? Can they be used on, say, oboe, or is oh, there any yeah. other instrument that you can use a synthetic clarinet pad on? Absolutely. Um, for a long time, um, I've, I've done synthetics on um, oboes, especially like on the lower joint. Not necessarily in the stacks or anything like that, but like on the on the on the bottom big two. Um, or anything that's in that part of the area as far as the lower register there it's it's great to do it they're easy to install and they work the the, the only thing is to make sure that the, the thickness uh, that you, that you use is appropriate for that brand or that era and we will have different thicknesses I know some technicians have asked okay you, you, oh yeah the opus clarinet pads are a uh, 110 thousandths 2.8 millimeter thickness are you gonna have thicker or thinner and yes yes to all of that yeah <laughs> okay, very good. And then, uh, is there anything else that we need to talk about as far as installing this clarinet pad? 
No, that's pretty much it. I mean, the, the, the biggest thing is, um, and I know you had mentioned it just a minute ago, is to basically not overseed it. Um, the two big things to make sure you to do or so to not do to, to have that happen is to not overheat the pad cup because if you overheat the pad cup, the, the synthetic material will actually, the only way I can describe it in my head or think of it in my head is like, imagine a marshmallow. You heat that up, it expands a little bit, and then when you try to mush it, it just it's this big mushy mess. Mm. I know it's a little bit exaggerated, but it's kind of the same idea. So if you heat the pad cup up way too much and try to clamp it, it's going to overseat. It's going to be, it's just going to look bad and it's going to perform bad as well. Okay. Um, the other thing that can happen is um, your heat control is good, but you leave the clamp or you hold the pad down, I'll say firmly, to seat it too long. Um, traditional pads, you can, you can have that clamp on there for minutes. Or, I mean, so I've heard people sometimes do it like overnight and stuff if, if, the, if the pad is firm enough. These, not even, not even remotely close to that. We're talking seconds. Okay. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of seconds to do it. And I, I, I barely did the clamp on there and I, held the, and I held the pad down for just a few seconds before. And if you can see it, there's a little bit of a seat on there. It's not real, it's not super deep and it's and it's but it's also but it's also there gotcha and that's and that's the kind of seat you want because if it's too deep then it actually well i'll say hugs the tone hole instead of sealing on mm. the tone hole okay so these are maybe a little bit faster to install than a traditional oh, pad. Oh, I'd 100% say yes. Okay, very good. Well, make sure you guys take the hashtag Opus Clarinet Pads. Put that in the comments below. Make sure uh, you like, share, and subscribe, and we're going to see you guys next week. Uh, I want to say shout-out to Ian Sim, who was watching this whole time. Thanks, Ian. Uh, hey, thanks, Ian. Good to see you again. Uh, thanks for seeing all of you, and we're going to be back next week. If you have any questions about these pads, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and until next time, happy repairing.